see the guy he was shooting at, too. Sup, sucker. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for number 15 in my weekly weapon showcase series. This time, taking a look at the original Chad gun, the tan man's right hand, the best economy flex in the game, and a true tool of the 1%, the Remington RSAS. The RSAS was one of, if not the first, true designated marksman rifle in Escape from Tarkov, and from the time of its release right up until now, it's been a favorite of mine. At first, I lusted after this thing simply because it was such a rarity, and it was completely out of my price range as a noob, which just made me want it more. Over time though, as I worked my way up from a cheeky hatchling to a fully geared PvP hunter, the RSAS became less of a mystical artifact, and the more I used it, the more I loved it. It's expensive, it has limited mag capacity, and it's arguably outclassed in terms of versatility by the M1A, but that doesn't change the fact that when this rifle's in my hands, I feel like a smooth operator at the top of the food chain. While it may not be the most cost-effective choice, and it doesn't peak out at meta-level stats, the RSAS is extremely accurate, pretty lightweight, has good ergonomics even when loaded up and suppressed, and it can do some serious work in the hands of a patient marksman. Without too much more rambling on about how much I love the RSAS though, let's take a look at the build that I'll be using for the rifle in this video. To start it all off, you can either buy the RSAS from Peacekeeper level 4, trade 20 dog tags for one at Peacekeeper level 3, or pick one up in the raid by looting a marked room, the Shoreline Resort, or the Kiba store. If you know where to look, it's actually not hard to find these rifles in raid, and that's where I get the vast majority of mine. It's honestly my secret trick to being able to run these guns a lot, you just need to loot a stockpile of them. The first change I made for this build is swapping the 22 inch barrel for the shorter 18 inch option. The RSAS maintains great accuracy and velocity with a short barrel, and you gain some ergonomics as well, so I often like to swap for the shorter barrel. Just make sure you remember to pull off the flash hider and gas block to put onto the shorter barrel if you do this before selling the longer one. For the suppressor on this one, I'm running the AAC SDN6 suppressor, which fits onto the Blackout 51T flash hider that comes default with the RSAS. This suppressor doesn't have the best recoil stats in the game, but it does have some of the best muzzle velocity stats for suppressors, which is perfect on a D DMR. Next up, you need 2 and 4 inch RAHG guides to add attachments onto the RSAS handguard. There's another option for the handguard here, but personally, I just really prefer how the build looks with the normal handguard. I went with the Fortis Shift foregrip on this build, and it's always been my go-to option for snipers and DMRs because of the high ergonomics. I also added my trusty X400 flashlight and laser onto this build. For the scope on my RSAS builds, I almost universally will go with the Voodoo 1-6 scope. It has great reticles, a very clear sight picture, and the perfect magnification for sniping. You have a few choices for mounting this one, but I like the JP 30mm scope mount, and then a delta point reflex up top for a backup sight. The last core part of this build is the HK PSG1 pistol grip. I don't like this on ARs, but the huge ergo boost is a nice touch when sniping, so you can aim quicker. Finally, as a finishing touch, I added a pair of MBUS backup iron sights to pile some more ergonomics onto the build. For the most part, this build just adds pieces onto the standard RSAS. It pretty much comes ready to go out of the box, and you just need to add things like a scope and foregrip to enhance an already awesome rifle. For the overall stats on this build, the recoil comes out to 116, with 75 total ergonomics. It's not exactly built for spamming left click with no recoil, but the ergo is definitely high enough to quickly aim and track targets when sniping. For the total cost on this one, it's around 345,000 rubles if you include the price of purchasing the rifle from Peacekeeper, which makes this one of my most expensive builds so far. I generally only run these when I find them though, so I save about 110,000 on the build cost that way. Well that about covers it for the weapon build, and I'm going to cut to some gameplay for the rest of the video. Let me know your thoughts on the RSAS down in the comments, and post your favorite builds for this high class rifle as well. Maybe it's nostalgia, and maybe I just like using it because it's kind of a status symbol, but I'm really a sucker for this rifle. The meta M1A gang can never convince me to give up on the curvy beauty of the RSAS. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch, and it'd be great to have you drop by the stream, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. There's also links to my Twitter and Discord down below, which I use to send out notifications when I'm going live. 
Finally, there's a link to my Patreon page as well, and if you're looking to support the channel on a more personal level, consider checking that out. It lets me commit more time to the channel and keep the content coming. Thanks for checking out the video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, corrections, or suggestions down below. And until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City. Gotta be real slick with these 20 rounder mags when you're fighting these guys. Pop this adrenaline. Oh, because I need it something fierce. We are going to do a reposition here. Dink <laughs> that guy. West Wing's definitely better for aggressive peaks from the roof, but if people are coming up behind you and you're the first one here... Oh, hey, bro. I see the guy he was shooting at, too. <laughs> that was a pretty solid shot. Why couldn't I make that one on the first guy? close. In terms of like if I had to call like my favorite backpack or what's the best bag I would say beta 2. But this one's sick and I like using it because it's it looks awesome. And it's really low profile. It's even more low profile than the uh, beta. There you are. This is this is the guy. He's going to die, and he's going to give me my quest completion. Oh, there's two of them. Fuck. I don't know how far up to aim at this distance. Let's make a test shot. Oh. There's no way that wasn't a fucking hit. <laughs> They're like, damn, we're taking fire, but this guy fucking sucks. this one six times at like 20 meters everything I was like fully not gonna miss that shot goodbye I should have fucking backed up a few steps got that hundred meters Those are some suppressed shots. Wow, that was a nice burst. Bitch of this guy got killed by Sturman. Yep, I Sturman.
lads card. Give me that goddamn key, boy. There you go. Yeah, this is... I actually want to use a build like this for the weapon showcase video. And I want to name it the toy gun, because it's what it looks like. Or the nerf gun. <laughs> Triple G phones. And a Val. Hmm. I don't know if that's even actually worth it, because G-phones aren't worth shit. Now that was a shot. Bet you this was the guy that I originally was shooting at. Oh, he's got a full Juke vest. And he's wearing that backpack that I was... Um, talking about before. It's all good, though. What are you? Bus, bro. Sweet TX-15. Sup, sucker? I knew I heard something. Oof, six, five, seven, bro. It's just weird that he's not wearing armor underneath the scab vest. We're all just gonna cruise by this exact spot. Like basically exit camping by accident. I just need one. Oops, that was that him? That is him. Fuck. He's so far away. I hit his legs. He's moving all slow. That would have been it. That was a tough shot to make, though. I'm surprised I even hit him, like, one time. I 
heard like a USEC scream in pain up here. Oh, there's no way that wasn't it. This is a ridiculous place to check this, but ah, oh, come on. That must have been a thorax hit. Oh, hello. And that wasn't 100 meters. It, like, what was that? Is that guy stuck on that thing or something? He was moving real weird. Maybe not. Who's he running from? Interesting. The plot thickens. Oh, he's coming back. Pretty sure that was a player with an M1A, it sounds like. Thank you.